Yeah, well, you know, if you come here now and look at the herd, um, most of the calves are doing their own thing, but every time you come here, she's always with her calf. Um, yeah, um, so she is a very good sim mother. Well, she's got the right genes, to, you know, to start off with. And of course, like we all know, uh, good uh, nutrition. Yes. Now she's able to, uh, you know, sort of produce her calves to the maximum. Uh, yeah. Well, well, you know, because the farm is smallish and uh, because we intensively graze, the, one, the biggest challenge is to, is to produce enough food. Because, as you know, nutrition is one of the most important factors. Um, and the next challenge in our area is red water. It's extreme here, both the Asian and African red water. It's a huge uh, it's a challenge. Well, the last couple of years we've lost a lot of cattle. We do blood the cattle. Uh, we're using a pour on now. It seems to really be working well. Um, this last year we've made huge progress. Yeah, we've lost a lot less animals. Yes, you know when we buy bulls, um, even for our commercial herd, um, we make sure we buy bulls from an area that has red water. Um, in the past we've bought um, bulls from places say in the free state and the bulls come down here and they die. Yeah, no, we just make sure you know, at the moment we get bulls from, for our commercial from Bergholm. We also have a lot of hot water as well as red water. And, um, yes. Yeah, that's what we aim for, to become more natural. So we, we, we try and dip less. Unless we have a crisis, we have to dip, say, once a week. But we normally try and dip twice a month. We play it by ear that, um, we look at the ticks on the animals, but of course, as you know, by the time you've seen the ticks, it's too late, but we, we try and monitor the ticks on the animals. If we can dip like every three weeks, fine. Um, I know some farmers dip maybe once a month or once every two to three months, but they've got to that situation where they've built up natural immunity in the herd. Well, there's a couple of factors one can look at. Uh, one of them is genetics. Of course, you know she's got to be a, uh, have good mothering abilities, enough milk. But coupled with that, you have to have the right nutrition to bring out her full potential. And good management, especially down here in KZN, you know, with our red water problem. And in winter, we have a very bad problem with liver fluke as well and worms. Well, we normally test the cattle and uh, we dose them for a little okay. food. Um, we'll just, uh, each breeding season we'll keep an eye on her. You know, she might go another two years. Cattle vary, you know, between themselves as well. At this stage, yes. Yeah, at this stage we are culling very strictly, so we're trying to keep the best. As you know, our uh, costs in KZN are a lot more than they would be in, uh, in an extensive area. We have to put a lot of fertilizer on our pastures here, so every cow has to pay for itself. Many of the cows are at the same level as she is. Now, we'll see that in the next couple of years, but uh, generally our Cows are good quality. Well, with stud breeding, you know, our main income will be the sale of bulls. Every year we do raise bulls. Um, there are some that go to the nationals. Uh, they didn't go last year, of course, but we will be taking again this year. And we also support the East Griqualand bull sale. Female calves, uh, you know, we keep the best. Also, uh, surplus, we sell them as heifers in calf to either private breeders or 
these nationals as well. They sell us heathers and cloth because that's when you can command the best price. Yes, well, her first intercarving um, period was 289. That's, of course, because they are heifers. But the average intercarving period over the last 10 calves is 376 days. The average birth weight is 41 kgs, and average weaning weight is 263 kgs. That's of her last 10 calves. Yes, yeah, normally our in, in intercarving periods are much alike. If the cows fall out of tune with the rest of the herd, they will get cold. Calves, uh, they calve down at the end of winter, so they go into spring and summer with their calves. We, we normally do that as a rule, we normally do it on the 15th of November, but with AIing we normally go from about the 1st of November. We start to heat spot the cows and we AI them. So we will take out the bulls um, on the 15th of February. You know, because we AI the share study, the bulls we use for covering up. So we normally AI once, twice. If uh, For the third time, we put them to the bull. So we don't actually leave the bulls with the cows. We will okay. take the cow to the bull paddock. This last season, this last breeding season, we have run the bull with the cows because um, we were short of grass. The only grass we had available was felt on the far side of the farm, so it wasn't practical to bring them in for AI. Well, the felt is also divided into camps. The felt we have here is a very poor quality. So basically, we use the felt for emergencies. That's why during the drought, the only food we had available was the felt. Yes, no, uh, our felt here is very, very poor. We don't have the red grass that they have in the higher places like Moira or Camburg areas. Our, our felt is extremely un, uh, uh, palatable here. So also our camps are quite steep. So, you know, especially in the breeding period, um, it's better to have the cattle on, on a more level. Okay, thank you. Yeah.